Hi world, it's the 31st of May 2024 and this is my astrological forecast for June 2024. It's going to be a bit of a bonkers month to be honest, um, but it's split into a number of different sections. So first of all I want to look at what each planet's doing and who it's affecting so that you get an idea of what I'm working with and then I'm going to sort of integrate it and summarise it and put it together to give a bigger picture overview. So let's start with the slower planets, uh, sorry, the, the faster planets. Let's start with the inner planets, first of all. These are the planets that affect you at the day-by-day -day level. Mercury, Venus, to a lesser extent, Mars. Mar Mercury starts the month at the very end of Taurus, and now that it's out of its retrograde period and really moving fast, it's going to whiz through Gemini. It moves into Gemini on the 3rd of June, and it will leave Gemini on the 17th of June. So all Geminis, you're going to get uh, an enhanced period of 5-10% better and faster communication over the first two, two and a half weeks of June. Then on from the 17th onwards, Mercury will move into Cancer, and the same effect happens with Cancer, but Mercury likes it being more in Gemini than in Cancer. So it's still good for Cancerians, but there's going to be a lot of words for Gemini and Cancer this month. Venus will... Uh, start the month in Gemini and will stay in Gemini until the 17th when it moves into Cancer. So again, both Gemini and Cancer are well aspected this month. Venus by transit, I don't really rate it that much, but it will still bring out a little frisson of uh, pleasure and maybe a bit of leisure. Mars starts the month in Aries. And this isn't affecting all Aries, but those Aries born, uh, say, after the 12th, 13th of April, you're going to find that the first 10 days of this month are going to be pretty hectic with Mars in Aries. And then it'll move into Taurus around about the 9th of June. And that's a specific day, which I'm going to refer to in a minute, because that's hugely significant. After this, Mars will be in Taurus. Now, Mars doesn't really like being in Taurus because Mars is all about feistiness and fieriness and direction and action and spontaneity and impulsiveness, and it's about being projective and assertive and sometimes confrontational and aggressive. Whereas Taurus is an Earth sign based in a solid, stable, consistent, gradual, steady roots and foundations. So um, the thing with Mars in Taurus is it can't express itself as loudly or dramatically as it would like to. So instead of being feisty and provocative and assertive, it comes across as lava, hot, slow, unbeatable. Lava can ink through solid steel. Jupiter will be in Gemini all month and for the next year. Jupiter is in a great position in Gemini. It's a bit of a gas bag. It talks too much and it promises more than it delivers, but it's optimistic. It's hopeful. It's innovative and it's very intellectual. So I like this. Saturn will go retrograde in Pisces at the end of June. So Saturn's beginning to stand still and it's making set aspects, and I'll cover this in a moment, but Saturn is particularly impacting on those people born around the um, 9th and 10th of March and also the 9th and 10th of September. And if you're one of these at the moment, you're really knowing about Saturn's more restrictive and limiting aspects. Uranus is still rocketing forward in Taurus. It's now approaching the end of Taurus, but it's not going to leave there. It's just moving forward. And late Taurians are certainly getting a lot more stimulus and excitement. Neptune is about to stand still at the very, very end of Pisces. Neptune is going to stand still at the very end of June, start of July, at 29 degrees 55, right on the cusp with Aries. But it's not going to move into Aries. That's next year. Pluto is now retrograde at one degree Aquarius, moving backwards, getting ready to take a little trip back into Capricorn uh, for the final time, and that'll be in a month or two's time. So let's look at the specific aspects here. The positive side of this is that at the very start of the month, in the first two or three days of June, we've got a lovely trine from Jupiter to Pluto. This is going to bring uh, a, a, a sort of openness to the idea of transformation, regeneration and rebirth. It's going to bring a better communication at a psychological level for a lot of people. It's going to open a lot of people's eyes to some of the actual different possibilities that are really out there instead of the old tried and trusted ways, there'll be a degree of novelty. 
this is nice enough. And to be honest, June is a fairly stable month for most people, except there are two or three things going on in June that are site-specific. The least of these will be the full moon in Capricorn on the 22nd of July. And this will take place at about 10 past 2 in the morning UK time. This is taking place just after the solstice, one day after the summer solstice, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere. And this full moon on the 22nd of July is actually quite nice. It's healthy. But the two things that aren't that healthy are both happening at the same time. The new moon on the 8th of, uh, sorry, on the 6th of May, taking place around about 20 to 2 in the afternoon, UK time, is going to be at 16 degrees of Gemini. Now, on the 8th of May, oh, sorry, on the 8th of June, I should have said June instead of May, never mind, blooper. Um, on the 8th of June, it'll be the new moon. The sun and the moon will be together at 16 degrees of Gemini. And also on that day, Venus is going to be at about 18 degrees of Gemini conjunct the sun and the moon. So you're going to have the sun and the moon and Venus all together in the middle of Gemini. So you think, well, what's wrong with that? That's a lovely aspect. Sure, they're all strongly squared Saturn. Venus will be square Saturn exactly. The Sun and Moon will be square Saturn by two degrees. So this suggests to me that that new Moon is the start of a period where there's going to be a lot of um, forced, forced restructuring of a, a large number of things in the world, particularly at the financial level and with regard to some of the national borders that exist in the world. But this isn't all, because this is on the 8th of June. Uh, on the 6th of June, this new moon. On the 9th of June, Mars will move into zero degrees of Taurus and then immediately square Pluto. The Mars square Pluto will be on the 9th, 10th of June. Mars square Pluto is one of the most challenging aspects in astrology. It produces might makes right. It produces ruthless, almost mercenary energies which will force its way through. And there will be situations in the world around this time where people will go, I don't care. I don't care what anyone says or thinks. I don't care about the outcomes. I'm going to do this and I'll kill anyone who gets in my way. Now, obviously, I'm laboring a point here. Obviously, it's not going to be that extreme, or at least I hope it's not. But there is going to be an element of extremism around this time. And with the new moon just before this square Saturn, I suggest that the period of about the 4th of June through to the 10th of June is one of those isolated points of time where everything suddenly will escalate and reach a point of intensity and extreme, which will only last for a few days. But at that time, there can be incisive and almost surgical developments and events which can change the long-term future. So... Anybody who's born around the 6th of June, September, December, or March, and then again, anyone who's born around the very start, very, very start of Aquarius, Leo, Scorpio, or Taurus in the first day of those months, you need to be careful around this time because it'd be so easy to get your buttons pushed to say or do something you later regret to be clumsy, accident-prone, impulsive, volatile, and it'd be easy for you to get things wrong. Perhaps the best way to manage this, for anyone who's affected by the events at this time, is to look at it and go, wow, okay, I've seen this happening, I've heard you, I've listened to you, I'm now going to step away and walk away and think about it for a week, and I'll come back to you in a few days' time, with a well thought out decision. But those people who overreact in that second week of March, of June, it, it's, it can go badly wrong. So this is a one time situation. The rest of June, sweet. By the time we're into, say, the 11th, 12th of June, the rest of the month is hunky dory. But that's a one time situation. So for June 2024, folks, most of the second half is fine. We'll be reeling. But that period of the 5th 
to the 10th, 11th of June. Hold your breath. Deliberately choose not to get your buttons pushed. Walk away from confrontation and don't buy into the hype and spin that's be going, going to be going on at that time. Apart from that, well, wait a minute. It's a little bit more. I'm labouring the challenging side here. I need to address this. There is also a positive way of looking at this. With that new moon square Saturn, if you're prepared to work hard in a disciplined and structured way, you can put in place really some foundations which will set you up for the long-term future. And this is particularly those born around the 6th of June and the 6th of December. And with that Mars square Pluto, you can either be a, a sledgehammer driven by fire and lava and and an insatiable anger or you can be a homeopathic laser and you can be incisive and cut away the poison and leave the rest of the body intact so what do you want to be a lump hammer or a laser your choice don't get your buttons pushed have a great month take care next time bye